infrastructure is crumbling and the problems are only getting worse. The pressure to find solutions is hot. Let's talk about why American cities have no water, no electricity, and no money to fix their infrastructure problems. Welcome to the Infrastructure Hot Seat Podcast, hosted by Chad Smelter. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Infrastructure Hot Seat Podcast. My name is Chad Smeltzer. I'm your host. Today's guest is Todd Psalms, who's the Commissioner of Water Distribution with the City of Toledo, Ohio. Thanks for joining me, Todd. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Now, Todd, I was going through your background. You started as a laborer uh, in in construction, just in the field. Like, is that start where you you, uh, learned infrastructure and how you got started? Sure. Um, you know, I graduated high school and I went to the local community college right out of high school, right? Didn't know what I wanted to do. Did that for about a year. And um, in, in high school in the summer, I worked for the little village I grew up in, you know, cutting grass, reading water meters. Um, and my old boss one day called me and said, hey, I have a full time job. You know, would you like it? Of course, um, I'd much rather go get a paycheck than go back to, you know, English 101 or whatever it was yeah. back then. Yeah. Um, so I started working in the little village I, I grew up in, you know, like like I said, cutting grass. Um, once in a while, I would fix a water main break or put a hydrant in. And that's where it kind of, you know, that's where it took off. I went and got a, a water distribution license um, with the state of Ohio. And and I and I stayed there for a couple of years, but realized I needed to move on to really excel. Um, I, I moved to a neighboring community. It was much larger, um, still as a laborer, but much more focused on, you know, uh, cleaning sewers, you know, uh, pump stations, you know, water main breaks, all the good stuff. Was a meter tech for a little while. Um, then I went back to school finally and I graduated and I got on with the engineering group there and I was, you know, performing inspections, eventually became a project manager. Um, and I did a quick stint as utility director in Michigan. And now I'm with the city of Toledo as a commissioner of water distribution. So, um, wow. you know, when I say started at the bottom, I mean, it was at the bottom. And it took a 15 years to get here, um, some some hard work, good luck, and a little bit of schooling, but uh, it, it's paid off. And I can't speak highly enough of, of the career and the opportunities that, that are here, you know, whether it's public yeah. or private. There's a, there's a lot of work in, in utilities. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's amazing. That's not easy to do. Most, not most, but some people can get stuck in that labor and never move up or growth out of there. And, and they were... They were great jobs. I loved what I did. I, I miss going in the field. I miss getting my, you know, my boots money. I really do. Um, but I just, you know, I had a bigger picture and and there's great paying jobs and, and they're very rewarding. You know, I could have gotten stuck and and sometimes I wish I would have. But um, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure we can get into that a little bit later. But and, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. During that process of like when you were first starting and just I imagine you're in your early 20s or something like that, you know, in, in learning the industry. What was it like? Because back, I, I did the same thing. I was 15 and started painting curbs and stuff like that in public works. And, you know, it, back then it was different. It was like, you get told what to do. You weren't taught how to do it. It was just like, grab the paint bucket, get out there and do it. You know, mow the lawn. You didn't even know how to run the mower sometimes. And you're just like, get on there. It's not that hard. You know, it's kind of just throw you out there. I, I had one gentleman um, in particular, he was my old supervisor. And and I, I could tell early on, he took a liking to me and he was going out of his way to show me how to start that lawnmower. Um, you know, what water distribution really meant, what, what sewer collection really meant. So I did have someone that was kind of helped guiding me, um, so to speak. And, and he encouraged me to move on. He knew I had aspirations and, and I thank him to this day. And we still keep in touch, you know, that's awesome. Almost 20 years later. Yeah. That's important to have a mentor early. You know, I'm starting to hear more and more people I interview and talk to. It's it's like that, you know, a mentor helped move yeah. them forward. Yeah, because you can get, you know, you get stuck in that rut or, you know, the larger organization, there's there's some more negativity and, and, and people want to kind of hold you down. Um, and I've preached that to some of our leadership here and myself. You know, I see these younger guys coming in the door that, you know, are are go-getters. And, you know, I try to try to find those and, and preach to them a little bit. Don't get stuck. Don't listen to the the negativity. Just keep, keep moving yeah. forward. I'll help you do that. Someone help me. Yeah. Cause there's, there can be that negativity you kind of mentioned and that can really just, just not, 
help anybody grow uh, further in their career because they always want you to hold you back, right? Pull you back. They don't want you to grow and be better than them. Uh, misery loves company. And, and it's unfortunate. <laughs> um, you got to separate yourself from those people. Yeah, you do. That's for sure. So what um, did you grow up in Ohio? Like is your family from there? Yeah, um, born and raised in Northwest Ohio, so I'm in I'm in Toledo now. Um, but I grew up about an hour south here, just this little little village. Um, uh, you know, sp- spent my childhood there, and kind of yeah. moved north um, periodically. You know, Bowling Green, Perrysburg, and um, now we're here in Toledo. So yeah, I'm for the most part I'm a local. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. So um, as you were moving up into your different roles, and you, you went to college, I take it. You said you got a degree. I did. Um, started with a two year degree um, there. You know, back then there was actually a water and wastewater degree um, through one of our training providers here in Ohio. So that was something I thought would be kind of low hanging fruit. Um, went and got that, you know, realized a bachelor's was probably going to be needed to, to move forward when I got my bachelor's and I recently yeah. got a master's. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was one of the biggest things I've noticed is uh, it, in order to be a public works director or, a, a you know, a commissioner like yourself, they everybody wanted that degree, you know, uh, yeah. they had to have that degree. Yeah, As, which I find. Always, Go ahead. No, I don't I don't always agree with it. Right. So everything I, I learned was in the field. Uh, there, there's two fancy diplomas behind me here. But uh, although it was great, I learned I learned some things. Right. Um, yeah. That there's that stigma so to speak, you need a degree or a PE or, or a master's to, to get to that point. Um, right. I, I, think it com- I was going to say, I think it comes down to more leadership training and being able to write correctly, you know, being able to just be a little bit more professional than when you, you when I was in the field, you know, look, I didn't care about writing, you know, all this no. stuff. I was like, let's just get it done. I didn't care, you know, but when you're in a higher up role, you have to be a leader and, and take a different and, approach. And that's where you learn those skills, right? Uh, yeah. With some continuing ed and, and some leadership training in school. Um, most of my job now is that it's, it's management of, of people, not right. necessarily, you know, field work. Yeah. That's it's so how many miles of water main and sewer main do you have there in Toledo? Um, 1200 miles of pipe, um, 14,000 hydrants. Um, wow. Oh my God. I, w- I should have wrote these down. It's a, it's a, okay. it's a large system. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, 136,000 accounts. Um, it's, okay. it's, it's about half a million people generally in the region that we're serving. Yeah, I would imagine that uh, water main breaks have historically been an issue that you've experienced throughout your whole career. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, every step of the way I've been involved some way, shape, or form. But it, it's it's a way of life here. You know, my previous employer is a little smaller. I obviously didn't have as many um, here. There's, there's one every day. There's two or three every day. So wow. they live and breathe that, um, you know, we do 400 a year. It's, it's incredible. I mean, they're great at it. They'll go knock out a 16 inch main break in in a few hours. It's, it's pretty wow. impressive. Yeah. That's uh that's a lot of hard work, man. Just, uh, it doing, is. Doing, they, yeah. Go ahead. It's th- it's a thankless job. You know, like yeah. th- these guys don't realize it, but I mean, they truly are. It's cliche, but they're, they're the unsung heroes of the, of the city. It's 24-7 operation. How do you as a leader now in, incentivize them to work through that part time, the late nights, the, the stuff of leaving their families? How do you encourage that? Because, look, the pay rates aren't that great. Let's talk about that. No. I mean, look, we're not getting paid a ton of money and we're out there saving infrastructure to keep water to our faucets. I mean, it's a big deal for this job. It, it, it's difficult, right? So obviously, yeah. like you said, that the hourly rates could be debated. It, it's not worth it getting out of bed at two a.m. It's just not. Um, you know, the overtime here is is robust, and there is that monetary incentive. They, the city's done a, a pretty good job in, in the union contract of compensating these folks after hours. Um, ironically enough, I'm actually looking at my other screen here. I was working with the director of public utilities, and we now are going to be incentivizing folks to get a license. So Ohio EPA offers license, whether it be distribution, collection, or treatment. Um, so I, I help drive that home a little bit so we can give them a little extra uh, for that pres- professional certification. But nice. you, you know, I, I do think people that live here and work here want to do a good job for their community. So we have a great group that it's just their calling. They, they get up at 2 AM and, and come in and, and, you know, fix a leak. Um, yeah. I, that it, it, that it does get difficult sometimes. Don't get me wrong. There are times that I get a phone call that they can't get a crew in. Um, 
Yikes. I, I think you drive it home and let them know how important it is, the work yeah. that they do. And, and this kind of gets tricky for you. I'm thinking as your position, if that happens where you can't get someone to come out at nighttime, then you got to rely on private sector contractors, I would assume, to help out, right? Do you have that set up? We we do. We have some local contractors. Now, they, they're not necessarily set up for emergency work. We haven't okay. got to that point. Where no one will come in. Um, okay. Usually, by the time it gets to me, I make the phone call. Someone will answer. Uh, so we haven't gotten there. Now, the, 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 the private sector does help out with taps and tie-ins and okay. some of the large main repairs, you know, 24 inch or so. Uh, we'll contract that out. But keep your fingers crossed. We have not had a contract to perform emergency repair yet. If they Good. heard me say that, they'd, they'd probably get a little little uneasy. Uh, I'm sure. And the only reason why, because it is a lot of work for, for these guys, you know, and, and, and girls to get out there and do this uh, in the cold weather and it's freezing. And I can only imagine doing it every day. It, it is. And, and, and it's a little taboo here. They, they, they're they not huge fans of contractors for obvious reasons. And, yeah. and I try to explain to them. They're just a resource in the event we need extra help. Um, right. You no, know, we're not farming your job out. We're not privatizing. We're not doing any of that. It's just a resource. Heaven forbid we need extra help. We're not equipped necessarily to to replace a 24 inch valve. You know, we have backhoes. We don't have, you know, excavators. Um, so yeah. they were resistant at first, but I think they're coming around to the, the idea. And there's so much pipe in the ground. I mean, utility wise, it, it's almost impossible for one team or two teams, even three teams potentially to keep up with it. You can't keep up. I mean, we have eight, nine, 10, 12 crews just to keep up with our maintenance is, you know, we bust at the seams. You add in, uh, what are we laying? Uh, $10 million worth of pipe. Those are taps. Those are tie-ins. Those are hydrants. Wow. A few hundred lead services to replace every year. It's just, it's an incredible amount of work and and you have to get some ex- external resources. Yeah. Speaking of lead services, I know we've touched on that briefly when we started talking, but, uh, how, how does that go? You know, have you found all your lead services and now you're starting to replace them? What's what's going on there? Yeah, we're fortunate here. We're So we're doing a meter exchange project as we speak. So by the time we hit that October deadline for inventory, we should have every service line inventoried in the city. I'm sure there'll be a few that were vacant or we couldn't get in, but um, we kind of lucked out with that. So our inventory is going very well um, and we're replacing um uh, you know, with the grant, the, 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 some of the grant dollars we get, we budget, you know, a, a healthy amount every year. So we're replacing at a fair rate as well. Okay. Um, so we'll see how the LCRI kind of works out with, with replacement, but um, yeah, yeah. inventory is looking wonderful. Oh, that's good. That's good. How about the PFAS stuff that's going on now? That's a whole nother level of like now. Yeah. Whole nother <laughs> level. Um, I won't get into that too much. That That's okay. the, the plant folks. I would, I will, I'll defer to them, but um, yeah, Sorry. it's just another regulatory, um, issue you know we have to deal with there's it, it, it's constant it's evolving there's yeah. always something that that we need to put our attention to um i've really been driving that compliance here you know with, there, there are things we have to do yeah um, according to how epa yeah hopefully we can get some money that'd be great to do all this we would love some we would love some money it is very expensive to replace pipe in the ground as you know um we yeah. will take all the state and the federal government has to offer yeah inflation did not help us with that after covid and mm-hmm. so no, and, and you know you're you're putting pseudo mandates on on some of this stuff. It just tr- it just skyrocketed price. Um, yeah, I mean, lead service replacements are doubled. You know, in a few years. Wow. How and you mentioned something at the beginning of a percentage increase, a growth uh, rate or something like that. What what was that? Uh, the the, the road tax levy. That that's yeah, three point two percent or something. Uh, so, yeah, city Toledo. I believe it was a three quarter percent. Um, okay. Don't quote me on that. It might have been a quarter percent. Uh, that's sure. another division. Um, but the residents, you know, are throwing some some tax money at replacing roads. Um, it's needed in Toledo. They're old. There's a lot of potholes. Um, but that's that drives the water main and, and lead service replacement. So as we reconstruct a, a new road, we want to replace that old pipe and, and obviously get rid of those lead services. So that's drastically increased the work for the main replacement and, like I said, the lead service replacement. So that's right. created a whole other issue that didn't happen here just a few years ago. Not now, an if, issue. It's a good thing. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying there. Uh, so if, if you're you got a growth rate, you know, to help fix the infrastructure, stuff like that. But you're talking about a lot of pipe. I mean, how long is it going to take you to replace a lot of your infrastructure these days? 
right now um, at our current rate, it's about 200 years. Um, so we're at a half a percent. And, you know, AWWA says Duck Lion Pirate's got a 100 year life on it. So we're at a 200 year replacement rate. Um, we increase that to to try to match that one percent, but obviously, you know, prices went up, labor's up. So I haven't looked at twenty four's numbers, but I'm sure we're nowhere near that one percent yet. We're talking about an investment gap of astronomical numbers in the next fifteen years. I mean, if you look at the American Society of Civil Engineering study that they did with that grade of C minus for infrastructure, I mean. It's like 3 million jobs we could lose by 2039. It's uh, $10 sure. trillion dollars in, like added to our GDP. <laughs> it's nuts. Sure. It's, it's, it's incredible. And you know, I worry about those things. I'm, I've got a lot of years left here. And, and, and most of the foremen, general foremen, supervisors here, are, we're walking out the door in a couple of years. So we're getting older infrastructure. We won't keep up to, to keep it new. So our, our main breaks and repairs are going up. And my workforce is leaving. So it's, um, you know, it's... Yeah. Things that keep me up. At <laughs> I was just going to say, how are you going to strategize that? Have you thought about an idea of like what you could do? Yeah, we've talked about that a lot. So fortunately, there are some 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 great younger guys coming up. So I'm hoping to replace that experience with with quality workers. But, um, j you know, just keep it, it's all about, you know, talking to your local politicians. We need. Yeah, we need money. I mean, it has to come from somewhere and you don't want to sock your rate payers, right? Right. I just don't think it's emphasized enough that, you know, this is the old, like you said, uh, what C minus uh, infrastructure yeah. it needs, it needs, yeah. it needs dollars. We need help to upgrade it. Period. End of story. Um, yeah. If not, yeah. it will not get any better. Yeah. And if you look at history back in the eighties, you know, talking to a bunch of people, uh, you know, we were getting that federal money for the water systems, you know, and then it dried up and they stopped giving that money back to these communities. So, and that that shows now what's happening because we didn't invest all that money back into our infrastructure. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, I said we're replacing a, a thirty inch main around the corner here. It was laid in eighteen seventy two. It's incredible to think about. That should yeah, have been replaced really a long time ago. Yeah. No. Right. Absolutely. Well past its life expectancy. Interestingly enough, it doesn't break. Um, they, apparently, it is. I don't know if it was install or just better material back then, but it's 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 in good shape still. I was going to say the same thing. It must have been the installation and the materials. And, and those are two key things that I'm starting to figure out in procurement processes that need to be like. You can see value. a gap, um, yeah. you know, 40s, 50s. Um, there's a lot that pipe, whether it was installation or material, there's a lot more breaks in that, you know, 10 year, 15 year area than mm. everywhere else in the city. That's we wouldn't have replaced that pipe had it not been for the road reconstruct. That 30 inch main from 1872 would have stayed put. Um, oh, wow. It really didn't warrant a replacement until, you know, it's only two foot deep. So by the time you reconstruct the road, you were going to just yeah. probably shatter it anyhow. I always wondered about that because when I was talking to a lot of cities, they would do that. They would do the road and the underground utilities at the same time. So they anything they had going on with road replacements, they would on obviously fix the underground utilities too is that like a common theme typically or is that just yeah a lot of the older stuff is pretty shallow here so by the time you reconstruct your road you're right on top of that man you can't run a oh, com really? you know a, a, a roller over it a compactor over it without yeah. causing issues so most of the time these roads are reconstructed that that water line is pretty old not always don't get me wrong there's some new main that they don't they don't touch but um yeah generally speaking it gets replaced what are you thinking about as far as technology these days? We are, we're a little behind the eight ball here. So we're trying to get caught up to speed. Um, there's so much new technology here. Um, it, it is incredible. Um, you know, our recent, just, just speaking here, you know, we're GPS in every curb box in the city, which I think is fantastic. All the field guys now have tablets. They can walk right over the, you know, they'll trip over the curb box. Yeah. Um, it was just a few years ago, you know, you'd have to look up like a card catalog, look up the old tap card, you know, and measure it off. Right. right. So, you know, and then some, you know, we could talk about predictive modeling and all that stuff. But um, yeah, it's it, it is just increased so much over the last even 10 years, 15 years I've been around. It's 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 incredible. Yeah, it's it is. It's it it's a lot to and I talked to field operators and stuff like that. And they're like, it's over 
complicated our jobs and you know in yeah. certain circumstances because some of these systems that i've i've seen software systems are really complex and you need a degree to use the things sure i i love new technology and there's a lot of cool gadgets out there but at the same time you know we always take a step back like, do we really need that you know you right. remember who's using it and, and is it really beneficial um yeah. You know, and and change, change is difficult sometimes. So yeah, it, it doesn't always work here. Yeah, that's one thing uh, I've been hearing. And I was talking to some guys that do BIM services over at US, yeah, I'm not at yeah, US CAD, but that's one podcast I just recently did with those guys. And they had a great idea. They're like, let's take the young tech savvy guys, match them up with those seasoned veterans that have been out in the field with their you know, intellectual knowledge of everything, you know, and put them together. And that way you have best of both worlds kind of thing. What do you think about sure. that stuff? I think it's perfect um, because you see that divide. You know, I see the older guys who, who don't care to get involved and the younger guys love it, right? It's just that right. generational gap. Um, I think it's perfect. You try to overlap that. Yeah. You know, you know what better yeah. way, right? Yeah. Um, we have some difficulty here a little bit. Um, you know, there's some union contract issues with job descriptions and what, equipment they're supposed to be using. So we try to work through that, but yeah. I keep telling the guy, this is just a tool to help you, you know, get to that next level. Uh, so yeah. Cause eventually I would, yeah. I mean, eventually Todd, you probably want to get to the point where you want to have as much analytics as you can and a much, as much data as you can so that you can fight those battles to get that funding you need when you go to council meetings and things like that. You know, I would. Sure. Assume. Yeah. Of course, the data, the data speaks, right? Uh, yeah. And, and we have most of that. I'm just trying to, it's a balancing act. I'm trying to get some of that in the hands and in the, in the minds of our field staff without, you know, like you said, kind of overwhelming right. them. Um, yeah. I want them to see the big picture and have every tool available to, to make their job a little easier without overcomplicating it, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I'm almost thinking we need like coaching. Some of that coaching stuff would be helpful. Yeah, I don't we know. certainly <laughs> need some coaching. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, it might help everybody kind of move forward and, and get some get some life changes and and, and motivation, right. I guess. <laughs> so, so what are some of your biggest struggles that uh, you had to overcome there at Toledo since you got in that position? Um, you know, being the new guy, um, been here about two years, and like I said, it's a it's a very strong uh, union shop, and, and that's okay. Uh, but they're they're resistant to change. So, yeah. I come from a couple different organizations where they were, they were very, you know, forward thinking with technology and, and efficiency and, and new products and material even um, here, they're, they're a little more um, siloed a bit and, and they're opening their minds, but that has been the struggle of, Hey, try this. Yeah. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but just let's give it a shot. And, and there's, there's a lot of resistance there. Um, yeah. But I think after two years, I've been poking enough there. They are, I can see a turn. I do. I can see a turn. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is hard. I mean, look, I, just learning a new software system, how to use it, it, it takes time. It does. It takes time for you to really, yeah, an effort to tr try and, you know, start implementing it. And they're comfortable, right? So, City Works, uh, we use City Works here, and it's our, it will become our database of record. And yeah. Throwing it out there to some of the fields say, hey, you're going to be using this to create work orders. And, and the arms are already up. Just calm down. It takes a little while. Um, we'll get there. We will get there. There's, yeah, I can assure you. But yeah, just working through things like that. Yeah. How are you doing otherwise? Like with, with you personally, like how's that? It's a lot of stress, man, in your career and your it, job. It, it is. Um, no one told me what I was getting into. Um, <laughs> it, it's significantly different. Um, obviously, coming from the field and, and even my previous job as a utility manager in, in a small community in Michigan, it's just, this is a very heavy lift. It's a 24 seven monster. Um, yeah. And there's 150 people in this building um, and there's 150 different personalities. And uh, like I said, the, the union has a strong presence here and there are grievances. And uh, yeah, but I've, I've got a good support staff, uh, two other managers in the building. Their offices are next door. Two great guys, uh, huge help. So I have kind of I'm not at the point where I can. I feel a little more comfortable delegating and yeah. and it's gotten better, but it's stressful. There's no doubt about it. It is a, it's a tough job. Yeah, I'm sure. I can only imagine with trying to implement things, new changes, things like that. And then being the new guy in a, in a, in the position that you are. And yeah, it's not easy. It's been, it's been interesting. It has been interesting. 
what's some, what's some of the future projects you have coming up in Toledo that you've been focused on or working on? Uh, future projects. So I, I won't touch lead. Um, that's what sure. know, we talk about that all day. So we got that coming. Um, I'm pretty excited about uh, we're contracting out a lot of concrete work, which sounds mm. like not a big deal. But City of Toledo, it's it's performed by another division, uh, the street department. Yeah. Well, it, there's been so many of these utility cuts, these main breaks that we talk about. Yeah. They've fallen behind. So it's several years before you may get your sidewalk replaced or your apron or your curb. We've budgeted some money, a uh, fair, fairly healthy amount to just contract that concrete workout. So I'm, I'm excited to see some of those folks that call me once a week to see their sidewalk replaced will actually start to get replaced. So that'll be a big one. Um, lead services. Um, obviously, we're, we're doing a lot of main installation. We've got a couple large um, valves I think we're going to replace. So okay. that'll be that'll be that'll be neat to see. I like seeing that, you know. 30 inch or 48 inch come out of the ground. That's pretty neat stuff. Yes. You you just kind of reminded me of something that you deal with all the time when you said it, that you're dealing with those phone calls every time, every yeah. day, constituents calling, you know, just, Hey, when's this getting done? When's that getting done? And that's a lot of what your employees like field operators probably don't understand what it's like to, yeah, you're sitting in an office. It's nice and cozy, but you're, you're putting out fires nonstop with constituents. <laughs> You hit you you hit it on the head. It's just constantly putting out fires, and you know uh, obviously there's a city, city council here, and and they get involved because you you know you were unhappy and you call your council representative, and then yeah. and that gets trickled down to myself. So you're right. It, uh, my wife asked me, "Well, what do you do? What did your day look like?" And I can never answer. I said it's just chaotic. I just put fires out and run around here like a chicken with my head cut off. Yeah, I, and that's something that if no one's been in those shoes, they would never understand it, right? So then, yeah, I never, 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 I never uh, would have guessed. I, I kind of poached uh, my colleague here from our, our former utility work for down the road. Uh, yeah, and, and he always tells me, "What did you get me into?" <laughs> but uh, he's a blessing, and I, I think he's happy to be here. That's a good point. You surrounded yourself. It sounds like with the right people, or you still are, you know, and, and that's the key to success, maybe. Yeah, we were really short staff when I came on board. Uh, like I said, I was driving to Michigan. It was about an hour commute. And with two small children, you and I talked about that briefly. It just wasn't adding up. I was getting home late and it was it just wasn't working out. So I came on board here a little bit of a leap of faith. And we were really understaffed, uh, missing a couple of key positions. Uh, my former supervisor, my boss, he had, he had left. Wow. Um, so I was kind of left standing here as the commissioner with no team or support group. Wow. So I grabbed him, got a couple other folks, you know, pulled in here. I kind of convinced them to come. So um, we're getting up on plane now and it's exciting. It, it's, it yeah. has, it's been good. Yeah. I imagine once you get everything rolling, your system in place for making sure that everything's functioning correctly, you know, then it you can kind of just observe and make better decisions, I would assume. Absolutely. Instead of those fires, I'm starting to put a little more quality to it. So, you know, you're delegating, you know, it can get done with this person or that person um, instead of me, you know, staying here all night, making sure it gets done. I can, I got a team now to, to kind of pass it around to. Yeah, that's great. And that's, that's what you want as, as your role is to have the people surrounding you to help you. Yeah. I would have, uh, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have made it much longer. Um, you know, I was treading water at best. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, Todd, it's been a pleasure, man, having you on the show and talking about your experiences there in Toledo and, and helping the audience I, understand a little bit more about your career. I appreciate it. Thank you. I uh, can't stress enough. Um, if you're looking for a career change, you know, utilities is uh, very rewarding. And thanks for having me. It is. Well, thank you, Todd. And uh, we'll look forward to the next time. We'll have some event or something going on where you can chime in and bring some insight. Sure. Appreciate it. Thanks again. Have a good day. Thank you for listening to the Infrastructure Hot Seat Podcast. We hope that this show brought you some insight on relevant topics within the infrastructure world. Please join us every two weeks on Tuesday for the next episode. If you're interested in being a guest on this podcast, please set up a 15-minute interview with your host at calendly.com slash chadsmeltzer. 